Welcome back to Engineerable. Today we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at this Black Max pulley puller or gear puller. It's a two or three jaw puller that can also be inverted. And what I really like about this design is that it's got a spring loaded mechanism that keeps the jaws kind of in a want to close position and not just loose all over the place like most of the inexpensive gear and pulley pullers. Here it shows you the different configurations. We got three jaws grabbing from the outside, two jaws grabbing from the outside, two from the inside, and three from the inside. And the range on this is three to four inches, 76 to 102 millimeters. They also have a larger version for bigger pulleys, I think up to like seven inches. I can already tell this is a very high quality tool. It's got a nice spring load of the jaws, so the jaws come back in. They want they want to be they want to be in, they want to grab, so it's not they're not just loose all over the place. You can also adjust the spring tension by changing this right here. It looks like it looks like this is as tight as it will go. You could always put some spacers if you needed more tightness on there to get it to push in better, but that seems pretty good to me. Um, then you can also loosen this up so the tension is weaker. So here it's got less tension. So if you want to change this to a two jaw version, you can, I would, looks like it's kind of tight, but I actually loosen this up first. And we, we can go from three jaw. It's a good way to possibly pinch some fingers here. Loosen up even more. There we go. So now that's how you set up the two jaw. And it looks like it's quite well centered. Tiny bit offset, but not terrible. Again, we tighten this up. We'll see that it spring loads towards the center. It has a nice center pin here, so it's going to stay centered on your shaft as you're trying to push it out. And especially if the shaft has a hole in it, this will help it stay centered on there. So let's say we want to adjust it to two out. Then you can put two out like this. This one's not, not spring loaded too much outwards. Let's see, center this plate. Now if we want to do the three jaws outwards, the spring loading outwards is not as good as the spring loading inwards. but should probably keep it in place as you're positioning your stuff in there. And like I said, if you wanted to, you could put a spacer here to make this compression of the spring even, even higher. That seems pretty good. So let's convert it back to the other way, which is probably the most common way I'll be using it. I just really like how this thing doesn't flop around and it should be really easy to attach onto some pulleys to push some shafts out. Overall, I think it's a very well-made piece of equipment. It all seems uh, very high quality. The price was quite a bit higher than the loose ones, but this seems worth it for uh, not having to deal with those loose jaws. The first practical use I had for this puller was to remove some bearings from a pull pump motor. Water had gotten into the front bearing and caused it to fail, eventually locking up the pump. The shaft was stuck in the front motor housing due to corrosion. I was able to use the puller to remove the housing from the bearing and shaft. That worked very well. The front bearing was totally trashed. I used the puller to attempt to remove that bearing, but it seemed super stuck, and I quickly reached the torque limit of the 3 8 inch ratchet. 
Even lubricating the screw thread did not help. The shaft had a screw hole in the end, and therefore the sharp point of the puller screw was not doing its job of acting like a bearing, like a dead center on a lathe. The flat face of the screw was against the flat face of the shaft and generated a lot of friction to prevent tightening the screw further. So I needed more power. I tried an extendable handle half inch wrench, but I felt like I was pushing the limits and something was going to break violently. So I had to back off. Fortunately, the puller was still in perfect shape, no damage done. I later found out that I had crushed the end of the motor shaft with the left hand threaded hole. Not having a left hand tap, that was not fun to fix those threads to get the screw to go in. Not the puller's fault though. Ultimately, I had to use a small abrasive cutoff wheel to cut a slit in the bearing to be able to open it and remove it from the shaft. That's when I saw that the bearing had lightly stir welded itself to the shaft. So that explains why the puller could not remove it. The rear motor bearing was pressed in tight also, but undamaged, so the puller removed it with ease. Much better than tapping it with a hammer and a block of wood like I used to. Overall, the puller worked very well when used properly. A thrust bearing on the end of the screw would be useful like a live center on a lathe. Although at that point where the screw will no longer turn, it might be time to call it quits and try a different method before something breaks.